hey hey almost a year ago i shared with you what is now my most popular video i will link to it at the end of this video if you haven't seen it but basically it was you know a list of recommendations i kind of flipped through some books um, shared some information about some online courses just shared everything that for me as an artist has really proven to be helpful and um, at that time i told you if you're like me and you know maybe you have a job that's unrelated to the arts and you can't go to art school and, and you're trying to learn this while you're at home you know i would be so happy to share some additional recommendations with you but only if you know, I had, I had read the books or I had done the work and um, I could truly wholeheartedly say like, hey, I think these are great. So that time has come now after another year and let's just jump in. It is mm, incredible. I, I love this book so much. Like I want to hug it. It's, it's gorgeous. So I'm going to stop waving it around and actually show it to you. So it is Nature's Palette, a color reference system from the natural world. And oh, it's just, it's gorgeous. Let me show you a few of the pages. So in 1774, a German geologist, Abraham Gottlob Werner, devised a classification system for minerals that was based mostly on color. And this book is based on that whole system. Um, it goes by color family and shows you, for example, you know, there is not just one white in nature and um, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. So for example, it will give you um, the color out of this system that was created by the geologist in comparison to CMYK, Pantone and Windsor Newton, Carondache, little green and pharaoh and ball colors so i think that is so incredibly cool <laughs> it's a great resource if you want to draw um, very close to nature i received this as a gift uh, from my mom after putting it on my wish list and i'm so glad that i did because it's an absolute beauty we are going to start with a big one <laughs> this is absolutely a book you need to know about if you're interested in the business side of illustration so this is the pricing and ethical guidelines handbook um, from the graphic artists guild again if you've watched any videos or done any research this might not come as a surprise to you but um, this actually really helped me and i decided to purchase it before it ever was like before I needed it. So I had this on hand and it was, it saved me. When I got my first, um, my first freelance request a year ago or so, and you know, you, you can't be like, oh, well, you know, sure, let me go order this book and I'll get back to you in two weeks. <laughs> like you need to be able to get them, you know, an answer, a contract, an offer, an estimate, like, relatively quickly and you want to make sure that you're doing it in a way that's professional and that you're doing it in a way that is going to well basically not hurt you and so i know on twitter recently for example there's been a big conversation going around and it's not just recently it's like all the time about um how artists you know visual artists that are especially at the beginning of their career get taken advantage of a lot like where if you actually calculate the hourly rate so to say that they're getting for a piece of work you know let's say they're getting 50 bucks and it's actually you know going to take them 20 hours of work that's that's ridiculous um i mean that's not any kind of living wage so i think it's really important that um, you familiarize yourself with you know all of the different um Actually, let me just jump in and then I'll show you just a few pages. You can see like what the book looks like and why it is such a wealth of information. So let us look at this gold mine of information. You have the table of contents here. Um, it's talking about legal rights and issues, professional issues, um, 
you know, I mean, it's a huge book. It goes, I think, what is incredibly helpful into pricing and customs of the trade. Um, so it'll teach you about like usage rights, um, just really a lot of things that you're going to need. It has some standard contracts in here. Um, it's yeah, it's incredibly helpful. And so, you know, there's um, information about graphic design, web or interactive design, illustration, cartooning, animation, surface design, and so much more. Um, I really find it helpful that there are, you know, kind of standard contracts and forms that then you can adjust to your own needs. Um, it has, let's look at um, like a magazine illustration or something. Um, <laughs> editorial there, 254. So let's look at one example here. So usually the way that it's set up is that there's a lot of, um, you know, kind of important content that is just written out and then there will be a table that goes over general fees. So I think this is something that you just have to have at home. I, I think there's no ifs and buts about this. If you want to get it right and you want to, you know, be in line with industry, industry standards and practices. And, you know, because for example, if you price way too low, you're not only hurting yourself, but you're hurting the industry um, by creating this possibility for companies to hire illustrators for a laughable price. Um, that makes it difficult. You know, even if you're just doing this as a quote unquote hobby or part time, there are, you know, this is a legitimate career and people have to be able to live off of it. So sticking to standards, I think there is a very important step that you should consider. Now, this second book um, is called Art, Money, Success by Maria Brophy. Finally, make a living doing what you love. And I have to just tell you, I hate the title. Like to me, it's kind of clickbaity. Like it's just, I had a hard time actually <laughs> purchasing this book because of that situation, but I'm going to jump in and show you why I think it is still worthwhile and why it is a really great resource that, you know, can get you thinking about all the possibilities. So this book basically tells the story of how Maria Brophy went and established a very successful business selling the artwork of her partner. And uh, here we have the table of contents. It's two pages. I thought the ideas were very, very interesting. I think everyone does try that I see to have multiple streams of income, but the ones that are described in this book, I find very um, unusual. They really make you think. And um, so it just talks about not just multiple streams of income, but really like sales strategies, uh, running your art business like a business, art licensing, um, gallery representation, like so many different um, angles on selling as an artist, not specifically an illustrator, but an artist. But I think there's so much that you can gain out of this, no matter what kind of artist you are. And um, yeah, so I, you can tell here <laughs> how many pages I earmarked, um, which I'm sorry if um, that upsets you um, as far as how to treat a book, but I really like to like work with my books. <laughs> so this is a good sign. If it looks like this, it means that there's so many ideas I want to go back to. So yeah, I thought this was um, really surprising surprisingly good because like I said I was a little concerned that it was a title like how to lose 30 pounds in three days you know <laughs> it's just something that you think okay I don't know about that but um, I thought it was actually very um, just really interesting made you think all right another book that I truly can recommend from the bottom of my heart is called How to Get Illustration Clients, a concise blueprint for quickly and effectively winning paid work for your illustrations by Alex Mathers. And um, this was actually recommended to me by another illustrator. So thank you. You know who you are. And um, 
I have to say, I started putting some of this into practice. And this is one of those perfect examples where I think if you actually live by this, like you say, okay, I'm going to give it a year and I'm going to go buy the book, literally buy the book, I think you would have success in getting paying clients. Um, but so often, <laughs> as sometimes happens to me, um, I read it and I apply like a little bit of it and just doing something 5% is not going to, you know, get you the results that are being suggested. So um, that's on me, but I still see a lot of value in this. And um, yeah, that's why I can only recommend it. Let me show you a few of the pages. With this book, I truly believe what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. It is not a quick fix at all. It's something that is very much like setting up a system, setting up a routine. Here you can quickly look over the table of contents. And I thought it was pretty brilliant. And I do believe that if you treat your work in this way, not just the creative part, but the, the networking part, um, you know, just really working on your consistency on that, um, it is going to, you'll reap rewards. I'm absolutely um, convinced. Now I have a recommendation that is from the time last year where I was focused more on the children's book illustration market. It's something that I really thought um, I was interested in and I think so often as an artist and that is okay you have to experiment and you have to see where does your work fit in what do you enjoy doing where do your natural talents lie and for me I think actually storytelling picture book illustration I I'm not saying I'll never do it and I'm not saying I can't learn that skill or maybe that I have none of it but it hasn't flown in the way that um, I thought it would. And I am looking in very different directions in illustration that are not picture book illustration. So this doesn't apply to me anymore, but it might apply to you if you're interested in picture book illustration. So this is a really great resource and I will tell you why. So this is quite a useful book as well. It has um, quite a few articles that were written on um, the craft. It has interviews with different artists and writers. Um, it talks about business and promotion. And then probably what you're looking for out of this book is this part, and that is that it has um, market information. So if you're looking for a list of, for example, book publishers or magazines or even agents and art reps, um, you can jump to that. And they actually have a lot of information there. So let's go, for example, here to the magazine section. It'll have the name, the address, um, contact information, you know, if they're focused more on fiction, nonfiction needs or poetry, um, they do, you know, it's a little more difficult to find information on illustration here, um, but sometimes they do mention it. Um, and so they have the same kind of thing for agents and art reps, book publishers. Um, I think this is, it's just a great directory and it doesn't mean that you can contact all of them because often it'll clearly say they're not, you know, accepting new inquiries from artists um, or they'll describe what they're looking for and it's just not at all what <laughs> you do. But um, I think it is still interesting and it also goes about like, um, sorry, it also talks about clubs, organizations, conferences, and workshops you might be interested in, um, different awards you can apply for. I think it's, you know, it's, it's quite a good directory. All right, this is one of my very favorite books. Again, it's from the time when I was focused more on picture book illustration and the dream of not just illustrating books, but being like an author illustrator. Um, but I think it is relevant no matter what. Maybe it go, well, let me actually just tell you a little about it and then I'll tell you where maybe it doesn't fit. Um, so it's called Perennial Seller, The Art of Making and Marketing Work That Lasts by Ryan Holiday. And um, yeah, it's so refreshing because I think 
so often the tone, you know, the, the things that you hear are all about, you know, this is trendy and this is what's coming up and then these are the cool colors. And I mean, maybe that's especially if you're um, in more of the trend driven, like commercial fields, um, such as surface pattern design or product design. Like it just seems like it's very like fleeting and I don't like kind of all the trash that gets created. Like not, you know, not as a, oh, this is bad, this is trash, but like actual physical trash of just this, you know, fast fashion and, and you know, everything's just disposable. And I think it's really sad. Um, and this book is a total mindset shift where it's, you know, one of its core messages is like, take all the time you need try to make it a bestseller like try to try to create something and put so much of yourself into it that it is something that is timeless um you know that one that's some work that you can really be proud of and you know kind of identify yourself with as as an artist and also that in the case of books, at least, that is the only place where the money is at. Like, I think, you know, many of you maybe know, maybe you don't, but if you go through some of the other books and if you follow illustrators and, and you know, other artists, so much of what you will see behind the scenes is that it is incredibly challenging. It is an incredible amount of work to make peanuts, you know? Um, and so often people cannot support themselves focused on the arts. And, you know, this is one way that the author is saying like, well, as far as book sales go, you know, there's, there's no real money in books unless you come up with a perennial seller. So think about it. Think about it and consider reading the book because I think having this in the back of your mind could absolutely change your approach to, to your artwork and to your creative work. All right, what else do I have for you? The most important, in my opinion, um, is the AOI, the Association of Illustrators. Um, right now, I think my membership has lapsed, but I was a member and I can highly recommend them. Um, one, they have incredible resources. Like you can, again, you, it's usually still an extra cost, but it's cheaper if you're a member. They'll have different illustrators give presentations. You know, right now it's still all Zoom, um, but you know, you can join them online and learn about specific topics ranging from portfolio building to pricing to website, like whatever you want. Basically, they have these um, topics that you can sign up for. So that is always really interesting to me um, to get those kind of insider tips. Um, you can also upload a portfolio with them. And something that I absolutely found to be very valuable is that they have directories of art directors that have willingly um, participated, willingly given their contact information. And so it's not like you're supposed to just take this whole directory and like blindly send everyone postcards or emails. That's not the idea. You still have to go and research each of the different public uh, publications or publishers, um, you know, magazines, books, whatever, and see like, does my portfolio fit their type of work, right? You, you still have to put in that work, but just having a direct contact um, that has said, yes, I would like to receive mail, I think is, incredible it's absolutely valuable so to me that is um yeah definitely an organization that you should look into they also host the world illustration awards which you know i don't know why but like one day you could have this dream like i you i have this dream i would love to one day make their short list or whatever i have never actually applied because <laughs> the caliber is so high um but I actually got to see the exhibition in London a few years ago 
and it just blew my mind how incredible the talent is and so yeah to me they are an authority um on you know illustrators so definitely worth looking into either joining or purchasing their resources individually um, i absolutely recommend them okay so there are a bunch of podcasts that i i just love listening to podcasts um like when I get up, when I'm getting ready in the morning, drinking my coffee, doing my makeup before work, uh, when I walk to work or I take the bus, I usually have a podcast. Um, so I am a very big fan of that. Um, and so I thought I would just give you a few that I think are worth checking out if you are into podcasts. So I'll split them up. I'll put them on the screen. Um, these first ones are more... Um, let's say focused on like mindset, um, focused on strategy in, in life or business or, um, you know, brain science, like just, they're not purely art is what I'm trying to say. They're not purely for a creative focus, but I love having that multifaceted, faceted, sorry, multifaceted knowledge, right? Getting ideas from everywhere. Um, so I love those. And for each of them, I will put like one podcast that I really enjoyed one episode in the links as well. So you can um, just check that one out, but look through whatever topics they have and see if anything fits for you. Um, then my second set are going to be um, some podcasts that are focused much more on the creative story. So whether that be like other creatives being interviewed that are successful um, or like business advice specifically for creatives, just a much stronger art focus. I will put those here because I think that is also a really nice mix to have in there. So. If you have any other podcast recommendations, put them in the comments because I love podcasts. <laughs> I want to hear more. Okay, so I know some of you who end up on this channel are very much have an idea of the area of illustration they want to go into and maybe know that, you know, what is what is it that they're missing that they still need to learn? So some of the other books that I've suggested may be incredibly helpful for you, but I know some of you that land on this page are also still a bit earlier in their artistic journey and that is totally fine. So sometimes I get those questions of like, well, that's great, but how do I actually learn how to draw? Um, and for that, I do have some awesome recommendations too. So this is really famous. This is one example, but Ed Emberley really breaks down into individual shapes, how you can draw. So this, you know, I, I think learn to draw the Ed Emberley way. Maybe it's a children's book, but it really helps you. And you can also use it, for example, if you're in picture book illustration, like if you're just trying to do really quick sketches, I think it helped me also when I was looking into um, like whiteboard animation, just really clear, concise, easy visual communication. In that case, um, this kind of base that you have to have is actually really helpful. So I think this is so great as a starting point if you can't draw yet or can't draw that well. So, you know, for example, with like a horse, he'll go through like each of the different steps of the different shapes that you need to draw. I just wanted to give you one tip. Um, when you have this book, this is something I actually learned in a picture book illustration class. It was a tip there. Um, when you're doing like your little thumbnails where really you don't have a lot of details, but you want really clear communication. One way that you can practice that is actually to flip this because when your book is flipped like this, then you can really shut off your brain in the sense of, you know, I know what a fox looks like um, and I'm trying to draw this from memory or, or what I think it should be and just focus on drawing the individual shapes, even if they look nonsensical at first, and then you flip around your final result and then you see that, of course, it is still clear. So for beginners, I think this is a really cool exercise. All right, and then I have this book in German. I will, in the comments, link like 
a similar book in English um, that follows the same kind of principles. Um, so this basically is like the art of drawing, Die Kunst des Zeichnens, and um, it's a practice book. This one is about animals and um, it is, it's so awesome. So looking at this, you start with some pretty basic exercises. You move on to, you know, understanding the shapes as an underlying form of animals. Um, and then it goes to, you know, much more <laughs> challenging work over time. However, always referencing those base skills of like, you know, by the end, they don't give you any assistance anymore, but on the way there, you know, showing you kind of the general shapes and then again, reminding you of um, the kind of pencil textures and work that you can do to arrive at that. All right. So one last thing I want to say about a lot of these books is that some much more than others, um, I've actually applied. <laughs> and many of them I have only read. And I'm a person who loves gathering ideas and information. And sometimes I find that I do that too much and um, don't actually do the practical part <laughs> of them living that out. Um, so, well, I just wanna give that as an information because a lot of these books that I have read I found very helpful but have not necessarily gone the full length to try to apply so if you ask me like what did I get out of each book you know did I get published or did I get an agent or this or that like well no but that's on me um, and so that's obviously a big takeaway for you you got to actually live out these things uh, for anything to happen but um, it's also something that um, is kind of prompting me to change how um, i'm going to be working through these books going forward um, and that is that you know there's actually quite a few in my rack over here you can't see it there you go <laughs> quite a few over there that um, I haven't even read. So that in addition to not having lived some of these um, really makes me think I need to work on them differently. So going forward, what I'm going to do is these 28 day challenges. So um, I've just started my first one and it's, you know, ideally it would be like 28 days and every day I'm reading the book and I'm actually trying to apply it. So whether it's a drawing lesson or, you know, it's some other action that I need to take, I do that um, and I take you along on the journey. But realistically, knowing my schedule, knowing my life, knowing myself, <laughs> um, it's not going to be 28 days every day. So my goal is more 28 hours within 28 days. If that's seven Saturdays, like a full day, seven, four, four Saturdays of like seven hours each, that is totally cool by me. Um, if it's half an hour a day and then longer weekends, like it doesn't matter so much to me how each of the days looks like. It matters what the month looks like and you know what I can actually do in that time. So I'm going to give you kind of the before and after so that you can see whether I improved um, and yeah, let me know um, what books you would really like me to do that with or if it's like a short Skillshare course or something like that where you would love to see someone actually apply it and see what um, that person gets out of it because I think that would be that extra level. Like I've told you these are good, but what would it actually do for you? I don't know. So um, that's why I think actually showing you that journey would be that much cooler. And that's going to be um, probably not my next video, but in two videos. So make sure to be subscribed. Oh, oh, oh. Um, if you haven't here at the end, I will um, share the... Yeah, the first iteration of this video, which has tons more great tips if you are looking for some additional recommendations until that like 28 day one comes out. Okay, thank you, thank you, bye.